is uh, part of uh, Dr. Gunter, uh, and the second part is uh, part of uh, Dr. Moen. And then just like uh, this part is two hours, it's from two to four, then there is a coffee break. And the second part is from two, uh, four, 25 till 5.40. And the second part is also here. Uh, and the uh, topic is the same for the both, uh, and it's the publishing is uh, in IC journal. And um, well, from me, it's all, so I'll, I'll give you the space and we'll All right, okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, and uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for attending. Um, we have a very short uh, space of time from two to four to talk about how to publish in good journals. Uh, in this part of the world, the good journals are named as ISI. In the UK, particularly within business schools, um, good journals are called ABS ranked journals. Um, whatever they are, they are world class journals. ABS? Uh, ABS, Association of Business Schools, yeah, ABS journals. That is what British universities follow as a rank in between. Um, the best journals are uh, four star journals, uh, ABS, uh, four star or three star journals in ABS ranking. Uh, so we may have a very uh, interactive uh, session uh, asking questions, conversations, etc. etc. Um, this is a picture of the University of Glasgow where I work. My office also in this very building. Um, Glasgow University is also a very research intensive university. Uh, there are such 22 universities in the UK. Uh, they're called Russell Group's universities. They admire, they advance research. Yeah. You know, father of economics, Adam Smith, studied here, uh, taught here. Uh, our business school is called Adam Smith Business School. This university was founded in uh, 1451, the fourth oldest university in the world. Uh, first one uh, being uh, first uh, Oxford, second Cambridge, third St. Andrews, and fourth Glasgow. Um, Research papers are very specific things. Uh, a research paper is a small thing addressing a specific novel question. When I listen to most of your presentations, I did not see very much that you were addressing a novel question. By question, mistakenly I think you mean either a practical managerial problem or policy problem or an economic problem or a social problem. These practical, managerial, policy, economic, social, or whatever problems, problems are not research problems. If you start your presentation with such a problem, practical problem, for example, Indonesia is very poor, therefore this must be done. Yeah? Latvia's education is very poor, therefore education must be advanced. They are not research questions. They are policy questions, practical questions, yeah? Addressed by policy makers, administrators, politicians, leaders, etc., etc. You are not 
policy makers, politicians, country leaders, or whatever. You are academics. Yeah? With an, with an inspiration to advance knowledge. Journals publish that knowledge. The knowledge being advanced is published in these journals, top class journals. Yes, these, these academic issues can be linked to your practical problems, but this practical problem must not come from these practical problems must not come from your mere observation about practical issues. Practical problems, policy problems, managerial problems are not the starting points of a research paper. Right. Then you have a question. Where should we start with? Yeah? If a practical problem is not a research question, is not if it is not a question for a research paper, where do you find the question? Sometimes we have a phenomena so we went search about this. How do you know about it? Uh, How do you know you have a phenomenon to discuss? How do you know? Where do you find it? Review. Not sometime, all the time. Yes, all the time. Not time, sometime. Okay. You must start with the literature review. Yeah. Not sometime. Mm -hmm. I did not see that you were referring to a stream of literature for you to derive, for you to formulate your research question. I rarely saw in your presentation. You instead started with practical issues, practical problems that bothered to you. They are not research questions. Research questions must be formulated, derived, observed from a systematic review of a stream of a particular research area. Yeah? In that way, you are linked to a particular discipline of your study. Yeah? My discipline is accounting. Therefore, always I read accounting journals. Most of us feel this accounting. I know him. He reads accounting journals. What is your discipline? Education. Education. You need to read higher education journals. Yeah? What is your field? Business. Yeah, business is not a discipline. Yeah. It is, it is I, I don't know what is business. Yeah? Marketing. marketing. There are journals in marketing. Mm -hmm. You must be aware of marketing issues. What is your business? Accounting. accounting. You must know accounting journals, top class accounting journals. Philosophy. Philosophy is again, <laughs> again it is, there is no meaning of philosophy. Philosophy, in accounting there is philosophy as well. Education. Education or whatever. Yeah, teaching. Education. Teaching, education. Must read education journals. Education knowledge. Education, yeah, education journal. Finance. Finance journals, lots of finance journals. Marketing. Marketing journals. Legal. Sorry? Legal. Legal. Law Sorry? Journal. Law. Law. Law, yeah. Legal practices, law journals. So you must, again, when we say accounting, when we say accounting, it is also a bigger thing. We don't know what we mean by accounting. Yeah? Mustafa and I are management accounting and control researchers. So we are interested in the development of management accounting practices, management control practices, performance measurement practices. 
they are in public sectors, private sectors, NGOs, whatever. Yeah. Therefore, we we read journals. Yeah, about it. Journals publishing these kind of issues. So you said you are an accountant. Yeah. Uh, what kind of journals you are reading? What, what kind of journals? General journals. And General. Any one that it is to the topic I'm interested. Yeah. In now you you can't you can't live your academic life in that way. You must be fallen into a specific specific school of thought in accounting. Yeah. If you are a if you are a quantitative researcher doing accounting research, perhaps you must know about one of top class journals in the world, the Accounting Review. Do you read that? Yeah. Or if you are a qualitative researcher doing accounting, you must know, for example, Triple AJ. Have you heard of Triple AJ? No, no. Is one of top class journals in the world. Yeah? So without knowing journals in your specific field of interest, without knowing recent publications, by recent means in the last five years or so, without knowing recent publications, you cannot start writing a research paper. Because you must carry on, carry on knowledge production exercise by referring to the place where the other people stopped. Research is a continuous exercise. It is going on all the time. You are a carrier of research. You are a carrier of knowledge production. Therefore, you have to start from where the other people stopped. You have to start from the place where the other people have stopped discussing something, something, some, something about management accounting controls in new public management we discussed last night. Or management accounting controls with regard to climate change agenda or management controls with regard to uh, novel discourses coming from America or whatever. You have to start your research paper from the place where the other researchers have stopped. Not from a practical problem that you bothered. It is not a starting point. In this research conference, I rarely saw that starting point in your research paper. That means simply you have to start from the literature. You have to develop an argument from the literature. So I have uh, I have lots of uh, slides here. Um, I've been te uh, researching accounting in the last 30 years or so. Uh, I'm trying to take you through the process of publications in top brand journals. That is what I'm going to talk about. One of the messages I mentioned to you is about writing. Therefore, I'm in all, all of you are doing social sciences, be it accounting or education or finance or whatever, you are social scientists. Social scientist lab or social scientist research mode is reading and writing. Reading and writing. Without reading recent publications, without knowing what the others have recently argued about, without knowing what the others have found in the particular area of interest, you cannot publish. You cannot start writing a research paper. Therefore, it is about writing. 
It is about writing on a daily basis. I write on a daily basis. I write every day because my job is to write. That is what we do at Glasgow. That is what Mustafa is doing at Manchester. Our job, our main job is to write. Yeah? I am I'm teaching also, but I teach only 40 hours. I'm teaching only 40 hours per year. For the whole year. Yes. I've been asked to write. I've been asked to publish in top rank journal in order to maintain the standard of university ranking, in order to standard of university reputation. We have to write on a daily basis. That is what researchers normally do. Yeah? We brush our teeth every day, we change our clothes every day, we sleep every day, we eat every day, we have a bath every day, and we write every day. Similar things. Otherwise, you can't publish. Therefore, I am trying to say something very briefly about writing about writing based on my experience. Do you write on a daily basis? Yeah? Yeah? Do you write? Uh -huh. Well, do you refer to journal articles every day? No? Uh -huh. Yes? Twice in a week. Twice in a week. Very good. It's a good habit. It's a very good habit. Um, Usually the reviews that they send uh, in the emails. Three weeks? Yeah, the reviews they send in the emails. Uh, top titles in this uh, journal. Yeah. Uh, we read it uh, three times a week or something. Yeah. Mm. Good. The whole journal. Yeah. Like that's, that's very good. The email. Do you have a pipeline of writings? Yes. Yeah? I have about 15, 16 papers in my pipeline uh, at various stages. Some papers are at idea development. Some papers are at first draft. Some papers are submitted at journal but under review. Some, people, some papers are about to submit, kind of pipeline. Do you have a pipeline? Yes. Yeah? How many papers? Five papers. Five papers, very good. So they are academics. Academics must have a pipeline. They must maintain a pipeline. So in the pipeline, you have to have papers at various stages. Then only you are developing papers within the pipeline, submitting the papers within the pipeline, etc., etc. Excuse me. Yeah. The pipeline. The the, the papers in the process. Papers in the process. Yeah. The pa yeah. the papers in the working. The papers in the making. Yeah, I want to know. Start in the P I P. P I P L I N E. I don't have a writing party. Oh, of course. Yeah. The papers in work in progress. Work in progress. Thank you. No marker. No marker. Oh, there are. Pipeline is one word, like timetable. The work you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. The work, the papers in work in progress. The papers in the process. The papers in the making. Yeah. At various stages. Right. When do you write? When do you write? Starting from 7 p.m. up to 10 yeah. or 9.30. Without any distraction? Without any. From your family members? Yes. If it's you have a, Yeah, that is your time. Very good. That is your own time. Yeah? It is private or public? Um, yeah. From the university. Is that, is that your private time? Yes, yes. Yes, it is, it is yes. your private time. 
Yeah. My working job is nine to five. Yeah, yeah. It is public. Yeah, yeah. What is it? It's just like sex. It is very private. It is very silent. Yeah. It is very sacred. It is about using your own time. And if you are a real academic, you have to do it in a natural way. And you have to do it very politely. And you have to do it very seriously. And you have to do it with an interest. If you do not have an interest, don't do it. If you can't do it politely, don't do it. If you cannot find your private time, don't do it. Writing is such a thing. Otherwise, you can't write. How much you can write? What is your striking style? How good you are at writing? You don't talk about it because it is private. You don't talk about your writing, the way you write. But everybody must have developed your own style, like style of your dress, style of your hair, style of your way, style of your talk, you must have developed a particular private your own style of writing. When we read big people's papers, we recognize, ah, oh, this is Bob Scapens, ah, oh, this is Trevor Hopper even without seeing their name on the paper, we should be able to recognize the style of presentation, style of writing. Why? They have developed that style of presentation privately over a period of time for that style to be their own style. Therefore, we can recognize by reading, oh, this is Peter Armstrong, this is Ted Allray, this is Trevor Hopper, this is Stuart Turley, we should be able to recognize. <coughs> However, you talk about writing, oh, I don't have time to write, I teach a lot. I don't have time to write. I have three kids. I don't have time to write. My husband disturbs me. Yeah? You, don't, you may actually have such emotions about writing. Yeah? Uh, only these emotions, by talking about emo emotions, what you do? You are talking about emotions only. You don't write. You don't write. If you don't talk about writing, that means you write. The people who talk about writing don't write. Instead, they would talk about the lack of time, lack of ability, lack of resources, lack of associations, lack of various kinds of talent, etc, etc. You are having some agitations. You are having some allegations about not writing. Yeah, am I right? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Because you don't write. Yeah? Yeah. So you should not attend conferences if you don't write. We don't go to conferences. Excuse me. Yeah. I, I, just, I want to ask. You told that if we 
talk about, we don't have a time, we don't have a yeah. time. So it's me, we, we will not writing or we will try to... You are spending time on talking yeah. without writing. Yeah. That so is why you are talking. Yeah. So you will yeah. not... So spare the time for the writing. Yeah, the time time you, are talking. You, are, you don't talk. You are writing every day. You have to take an action. Yeah, you, you have to be active. Yeah. As if you are finding excuses for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is how people behave. You, 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 you talk about excuses. Yeah. So we get money from our universities to attend conferences. The conception of attending conference is different here, I think. You all believe that the conference is a destination of a publication. You come here to get something published through the conference. Conferences are not such things from our Western universities' perspective. Conferences are places for networking. Conferences are places for getting feedback. Conferences are places for getting your papers improved. Conferences are places for getting the other people to hear your work. Conferences are places for exchanging ideas. Conferences are not the destination of publications. Co conferences, conferences are a medium of publication. You, you must actually go through the mechanism of conferences because you get feedback, because you, feel pe you get people's ideas. You get the papers improved by attending conferences. That is why people must actually come to conference. But you should not come to conference if you don't write every day. If you don't write every day, what you do is that you write something rubbish for the conference. And you present the rubbish at the conference. And asking the conference organizers to get it published. And conference organizers are struggling to get it published because they are rubbish. They are rubbish. I see lots of rubbish papers being presented. Why they are rubbish? You don't write every day. You don't read every day. You don't refer to the literature. You don't know what is going on in the stream of area you are interested in. You don't know where the other people, like me, stopped somewhere in order for me to actually carry on. That is knowledge production. Therefore, writing is important. I'm passing on some messages. Paper, if you have lots of things to say, if you have a lot of things to say about policy problems, about education problems, about economic development problems, about people's behavioral problems, if you have lots of things to say, don't write a paper. Write a book. Write a rubbish book. If you have lots of things to say, don't write a paper. Because paper is not about saying everything and many things. Paper is about a specific thing. Something specific. The specific thing that the previous researchers have done. You may actually start management accounting researchers have studied the notion of trust, linking the trust idea to people's individual behavior. That is my first sentence of a bit. However, such researchers have neglected as to how Trust is actually constructed through their own psychological processes. Ah, something is missing there. Researchers have so far 
amply discussed about trust, the notion of trust in relation to the practices of management, accounting, and controls. We know about it. In the last 30 years or so, many researchers have done it. However, they have advertently or inadvertently neglected how the notion of trust, the institution of trust, is actually constructed at a mundane level through their psychological processes. I have not seen such a paper in the past. Therefore, in this paper, I am making an attempt to articulate how the trust is constructed through the mechanism of psychological processes. That is my paper. That is my question. That is my problem. That is my intellectual puzzle. I am seeking an answer to that question. I am seeking an analysis on that particular issue. I am seeking some proof with data about how it is done in practice. That is, therefore, it is, isn't it a specific thing? Isn't it a specific thing? Yes, it is. I'm not talking about management accounting in general. I'm not talking about trust in general. I'm not talking about controls in general. I'm not talking about people's behavior in general. I'm talking about a specific thing in the broader context of management accounting, management control, behavior, psychology, etc., etc., but I am talking something specific. Paper, a paper, a research paper to be published in a high ranked world class journal is such a thing. Research paper is such a small thing. It is not everything. It is not anything. It is a specific thing. And it is a small thing. If you are talking about education, don't talk about education in general. Education is a research stream. People have done a lot so far. Try to find out something that people have neglected, intentionally or unintentionally, advertently or inadvertently. Something that has been neglected, a specific thing. Therefore, paper is a small thing with a clear focus, a clear argument, and a clear message. I argue in the paper how the trust is actually constructed through the psychological mechanisms of people. I argue that and I prove it and I articulate it and that is a message for other researchers to carry on or to debate or to reject, or to critique. But you know this thing. There are, I saw these things in the, in the, in the conference here. You, you presented all these things. But, but what I saw was that actually they were not well done. But my message is that a paper is a specific small thing. If you can't, and, and also a paper must be an exciting thing, a surprising thing. Yeah? When, we, when, I, when I present a paper 
at an international conference, a journal editor sitting at the back, famous journal editor sitting at the back, asked when I presented one of my papers at Stockholm conference, Dan, what is surprising here? What is, am I ex excited by your, by your work? Can you convince me about it? Should I be excited by your work? Should I be amazed? Should I be astonished? Is that a surprise for me? Your paper? Did your paper come as a surprise for me? Such a thing is interesting. Therefore, a paper must be an interesting thing. You have to construct that interest in the form of presenting a paper, in the form of writing a paper. Don't talk about general things. Indonesia is a developing country. Oh, we all know that. Why are you all saying it? Don't talk about general things. Students are now not doing engineering subjects. We know that. Why are you all saying it? Don't try to fix that out. It is not a research question. It is how the world moves. Don't worry about it. Talk about how the world moves. Talk about why. But focus on a specific thing. Therefore, paper is such a thing. Have you thought of that before? Paper is a specific thing. But, but, but the other thing is, in order to maintain that specificity in the paper, it doesn't mean that you have to write a very short paper. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't mean that you have to write a very short paper. Normally, ISI, top class, well-ranked journals, paper length is 8,000 to 15,000. Normally, all of my papers Average size of my papers are 15,000 words. 15,000 words. Excuse me, how many pages, please? I don't know. It depends on the font size of journals. Yeah. yeah? It depends on the print, of type of the print of journals. Yeah? Uh, but if you divide by 300, 15,000 by 300 is about, five, yeah, five, five. 300 is about 40 to, oh. 40 to 50 pages, mm -hmm. yeah, including references. Yeah. But normal articles you presented, I believed some of them, the maximum length would be 10 to 12 pages. They are not substantive. They cannot carry a message. They cannot contain an analysis. They cannot prove the argument. A paper is also an argument. And the paper presents that argument. In the paper, you must have only one argument. Because an argument is one argument. If you have several arguments, what you do is that there is, you are disrupting other arguments. If you have four arguments, that means there is no argument. If there are four arguments, that means there are four papers. If there are four papers, that means there is no paper. Top rank journals send us the papers for a review. We are normally blind reviewers. Every week I get a paper from a journal around the world. 
Firstly, I look at the paper to see whether it is a paper. If it carries two, three papers together within 15 pages, I just reject it. Because there are three papers means there is no paper. If the paper comes without data, that means the argument is not proved. Therefore, I would reject it. If there are, if there are data, but there is no any analysis of the data with a theory, with the theory, I reject it. Because set of data is an empty work, no theoretical analysis. Therefore, paper is one argument. What you write is, you present that uninterrupted flow of the argument. Your argument must be presented in an uninterrupted flow from beginning to the end. If something is interrupting that argument, just delete everything. Leave the argument in the paper. So paper, therefore you must understand that when I, when I listened to so many papers you presented here, I felt that they are not papers. I felt that there is no research. I felt that they are not research papers. Yeah? Sometimes we make a summary for this, uh, uh, the pages, because it's, it's very expensive to pay. Because when we, when, we have pay, when we have a lot of pages, we have to pay a lot of money. No, so no. I can conclude. No, top brand journals don't charge for you to publish. Free or free charge? Free or free? Sometimes free sometimes when I read the not research. sometimes. All the time, top class journals publish your work free of charge. Why? Why? Because it's difficult to publish it. Huh? Because it's very difficult. No, they, they respect our hard work. Sometimes I can't find They the buy issue. our work free of charge. Mm -hmm. You don't need to pay for the publication. They buy our work free of charge. All of the journals? Oh, yes. Top class journals. Top class, Top class journals. <laughs> and how knowledge and how it is knowledge is produced. It is about how knowledge is produced. How knowledge progresses. Universities, universities should not exist if that knowledge is not produced through journals. Universities should not have their own journals. We don't have our own journals. But we all publish in top brand journals. And we work in the university. Therefore, universities exist. If you don't do that, your universities cannot be universities. It could be teaching colleges. If you don't research, if you, if you don't contribute to knowledge production, exercise, you are not maintaining that university. Universities must be reproduced over and over again, generations after generations. How? By producing knowledge by contributing to the existing knowledge. That is what you must do. By doing that, what you do is that you are reproducing your university. You are maintaining your university. Therefore, you are then working in a university. Your university becomes a university when you work in that way in research. Therefore, again, I am reiterating and reinforcing the message that you must start writing by referring to the previous research. Otherwise it is not a paper. Otherwise it is not a research. Yeah? I want to ask more clarification about the, the, the paper should be only about one point, very specific. 
sometimes they I don't, I don't buy the questions. term yeah I don't buy the term point a, a paper must actually add something specific yeah to the previous discussion to the previous conversation in the literature something specific but it must be very interesting and it must actually create a surprise in the minds of the readers. Yeah? Who are you writing to? Who are you writing to when you write a research paper? Students. Now, not students, other researchers, other, researchers. other colleagues. Other colleagues, where? The people who are attending the conference? No, other colleagues in the world. In the world. Yes. Research is international. Research is a global exercise. You must write to your colleagues. I am an expert in management accounting in developing countries. There can be such 10, 15 people in the world, including me. Particularly, I am writing to my colleagues who are around the world. I'm working with those people as well. I know them very well. They are based in many continents, Australia, New Australia, or New Zealand, or Canada, or Europe, or Nigeria. wherever. Yeah, I don't have a colleague from Nigeria. You're from Nigeria. Yeah, I have a colleague from Ghana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you have to write to your colleagues. They can only understand what you talk about. Therefore, you have to present your research paper at a conference where those people are in. Then they get interested. They ask questions. They are capable of making comments on your work. Right, shall we move on? I'm not promising to you. I'm, I'm going to circulate these slides to you. Yes. I'm not going to promising to complete all these slides, but I'm having a conversation with you. Yes. I said that the paper is a new thing. Paper is a small thing. Paper is a specific thing. In what sense? In what sense a paper should be specific? You are taking an existing theoretical approach. You are taking an existing theoretical approach to show new evidence. New evidence. New data analysis, a new story. In, in qualitative terms, I call a new story. Because in qualitative research, what we do is that we write a story. We are storytellers, but taking a theoretical approach. That is new. In that sense, the paper is specific. The paper is not specific in, the, in terms of its approach, but it is new in terms of data. New evidence in an old way. You're taking the same approach. You're taking a, a same, you're, you're taking or you're considering old evidence, but in a new way. It could be a review paper. You listened to Professor Cameron Armour's uh, presentation yesterday. He presented the research paper. It was a review paper, a review paper on corporate governance, yeah? 
but also he mentioned can you remember you are not just summarizing what the others have said in the review paper you have to show a new approach for the other researchers to carry on that is a specific thing in a paper that is acceptable to be published Or you may compare old evidence, old approaches, etc., etc., in a new way. So there are only just list. You can be innovative. Don't take my my my, my list as the final list. Researchers are innovative. They can come out with new way of making other people surprised. That is the purpose of writing a research paper. Make the make it interesting. Make the others surprised. Make the others astonished. Make the others amazed by your work. Rather, don't just talk about your emotional botherings about practical problems. That is not research at all. Don't talk about your emotions in a research paper. Your religious emotions, your developmental emotions, your educational emotions, your behavioral emotions. Don't present them. They are not research papers. Emotions cannot be proved. Emotions can only be proved by yourself only. It is not acceptable. You have to have a proof Proof with data, proof with analysis, proof with comparison, proof with historical archives if you do historical research. Otherwise, they are not research papers. As I said, I'm, I'm not going to cover all the slides. Now, I have used up one hour. Yeah. Are we moving? Are you getting something? Yes. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Have you heard of this categorization? Positivistic and post-positivistic. No. no? no? You have. Very good. If you read, you must have heard of it. Yeah? These are philosophical terms. The people who follow quantitative approaches with a view to testing previous or uh, your own hypotheses. Yeah? They are called Karl Popperian scientific approach to research. Have you heard of that? Karl Popper? Yeah? Karl Popper? Yeah? The philosopher, scientific philosopher, who argued for a scientific method in research. There you start with a set of hypotheses, then you unpack the hypotheses into independent and dependent variables then you collect data on dependent and independent variables for cross-sectional statistical regression whatever analysis yeah which is called hypothesis testing which is also called scientific research such research is called positivistic research. 
Got it? Yeah. And all the other anti-positivistic research is called post-positivistic research. I am fallen in the second category. My friend Mustafa is also fallen in the second category. We have scientific reasons to critique why positivistic research is not good. In the last 30, 40 years, critical, interpretive, accounting researchers have formally, systematically, scientifically disproved the validity of positivistic research. Yeah? There are a number of articles to that effect. Inspired by such critique, we are taking post-positivistic research, anti-positivistic research. Yeah? There, we don't believe in hypothesis testing. There, we don't use quantitative analysis. There, we don't believe in statistical generalizations. There, we don't categorize data as dependent and independent variables. There, we don't look for statistical significance. There, we don't use statistical packages. Instead, we believe in qualitative case studies. As I mentioned the other day, all of my PhD students, Mustafa's PhD students, conduct one single company or one single research site for their PhDs, for their research papers. Yeah? I have a PhD student from Egypt, he has submitted his PhD, he spent four years on writing it, he studied only one single company in Egypt. Just one. Just one. Yeah, almost all British universities, almost all British accounting departments do that. Yeah, not only British, the people who admire post-positivistic research. It doesn't mean that you have to conduct one single organization. For my PhD, I did two case studies for the purpose of comparison, but for a, for, for a particular reason. <coughs> Another PhD student I have now is from Bangladesh, a lecturer from Dhaka University. He is doing accounting in microfinance. Accounting in microfinance. He found a different form of accounting practice. He calls it oral accounts. Accounts by talk. Oral accounts. He studied a village, a rural village in Bangladesh. One village. He spent his time over a period of six months in that village. That's a case study. That's an anthropological case study. That is a post-positivistic form of research. I have another PhD student, a lady from Sri Lanka. 
She conducted field work in Sri Lanka within Sri Lankan tea plantations. Sri Lanka is famous for tea. Tea was grown from the 18th century in Sri Lanka, which was introduced by the British administrators. She studied, my students studied a division of a tea estate in Sri Lanka. The company had lots of divisions, but she studied only one division located in one geographical space. She studied how gender, feminism is implicated in the practices of management control in Sri Lankan tea plantations, particularly in the post-colonial period. Such pieces of research, such pieces of research fall in the category of post-positivistic research. Another thing is that there are no quantitative analysis, instead there are stories. Therefore, you talk to people in detail about their daily lives in relation to the issue she or he is talking about. Spending about six months, nine months, I spent 11 months in one company in the past in order to understand what is going on. Therefore, such research is very intensive, very longitudinal, very detailed, very rich. We call them rich accounts. We call them rich data. They are stories. But if I am a newspaper journalist, I would be interested only in that story. Story of Sri Lankan women plucking tea in tea plantations. I will write a story about their lives in a newspaper article. But our PhD student's thesis is different. She has that story, but in that story, there is a theoretical analysis in between. In other words, a story is intertwined with the theoretical analysis. A theory is imprinted in the story. A theory is well embedded in the story. Therefore, this, this story is a theoretical analysis. That is the difference between a journal article and a newspaper article and a research paper. Theories, where do you find them? Theories. Accounting has no theory. My students are accounting students. You are a marketing scholar, I know. I spoke to you. Marketing has no theory. Instead, you draw theories from economics or industrial economics. That is market. That is, marketing is largely rooted in industrial economics and psychology, and political economy. That means you need to draw from other disciplines in order to theorize your story. Accounting has no theory. Double entry bookkeeping is not a theory. Balance code card is not a theory. CVP analysis is not a theory. Environmental accounting disclosure is not a theory. IFRS is not a theory. Activity-based costing is not a theory. They are just practices. They are just methods. They are just procedures. How do you make sense of these practices? How do you 
say why they do these practices. How do you show why and how these practices have evolved to the current form of that company? Why? Why? How? Such questions cannot be actually answered by just referring only to the, th only to the story. Therefore, you need a theory as a lens for you to see the world. Therefore, theories provide you with lenses for you to make sense of what is going on in this world. Then you can see the world clearly. That's the role of a theory in post-positivistic research. Therefore, qualitative case studies are not descriptive. You presented statistics without a theory. They are descriptive. They are descriptive statistics. Percentages, means, whatever, regressions, relationships, they are descriptions. Descriptive statistics, no theory. No, no any sense. But when you write a story using a theory under theoretical categories, under the inspiration of theoretical arguments, that's a theoretical analysis. Therefore, qualitative case studies are not descriptive work. The people who are very novice, very junior, very inexperienced to research, they think that when there are no numbers, that is not, that is not a theory, research. When there are lots of words, descriptions, that is not a theory, that is not a research. Big people in the world, the people who introduced theories, wrote paragraphs after paragraph, paragraph after paragraph. People like Karl Marx, people like Max Weber, people like Michel Foucault, people, people like Derrida, people like Adam Smith, people like David Hume, they wrote chapters after chapters to make sense of the world. That is theory. If you have a story at hand, you can make a theoretical argument. In my workshop, I like to talk about my area of approach, which is qualitative case studies. Most of accounting departments in the UK and best universities in Europe, like French HEC or Denmark Business School in Denmark, Copenhagen Business School in Denmark, Stockholm Business School in Sweden, yeah? Helsinki Business School in Norway, Norwegian School of Economics, London School of Economics, Manchester Business School, Warwick Business School, they all most do 99% qualitative post-positivistic case studies, why that is the opportunity for them to use social theories. Because management, accounting, marketing, HRM have no theories. They are practices. Therefore, if you want to know why people buy that product more, why that marketing channel works better, why some products are sold better in that geographical area, you need a social theory to explain it. There are YouTube talks by Hart and Negri. They have written a book Empire. They explain what is this world now? What is this world now? What is this globalized, neoliberalized world now? Why 
why microfinance is traveling to remote rural areas, finding rural poor women's bodies as marketplaces, how rural village women's relationships have been transformed into a marketplace, that kind of sociological analysis is very interesting, very exciting, very amazing. Otherwise, economists say that, or banking people say that, oh, we are giving loans to you know, rural women to get their poverty reduced, is it? We have another limit. We have a sociological analysis to what is going on. We read empire, hard work, hard to read, very difficult to read. You can find this book, Google now, Empire, Hard and Negri, 2005. 2009. So I liked, so we, we, we read this new, these new developments in social theories. Why? We need social theories to explain our stories. Because our disciplines have no theories. Business school disciplines have no theories. Business schools teach marketing, HRM, production management, accounting, whatever. They are not theories. They are practices. The, thing, the, the, the way things should be done, they are not theories. Now, these young people think that balance scorecard is a theory. No. It's not a theory. What is a theory? Way of explaining the world. The way of knowing about the world. Why do we do research? To know why things happen in the world. Not to recommend how to do things better. That is not research. That is the role of the politician. That is the role of the policymaker. That is the role of the World Bank or Central Bank or whatever. They are not the role of research. Don't recommend anything. Instead, make a tiny incremental contribution to existing knowledge about the thing you are talking about, not everything. Make a contribution, incremental contribution. Why incremental? Research is a small thing, a specific thing. You can't do everything. An incremental contribution. Then what is going to be the rest? The other researchers will carry on. In the last paragraph of your research paper, you must write something about future research direction. Not the recommendation to better practices. That is not your role. You're an academic. That is why in research intensive universities such as Glasgow, such as Oxford, such as Imperial College, such as LSE exist. Because we are making a contribution to knowledge. If you don't do that in your research paper, you are not writing a research paper. If you don't present about it at the conference, you are not presenting a research paper. Right, shall we move on? <coughs> people don't, if you, people, if you don't write, if you don't write, what will happen? You will not write. If you don't write, you will not write. Why? You have these fails. You have these fails. I hate really revising. I can't get my first draft. My English is not good. Other people think that I am dumb. I have a good 
to die there, but fog is coming in front of me. Get the things blessed. If you don't write, you will not write because you are not writing, therefore you are having things. You don't have time to write, why? You don't have time to write, why? You are spending time on this. Therefore you don't have time to write. Why you are not writing? You are bothering about writing and you are spending time on bothering. Therefore you don't write. That's my experience with my students. Lots of, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm going to circulate this thing. Send it, yeah, sorry. Lots of feelings. All these are negative feelings, but at the same time, if you have some positive feelings, you may gradually start writing. Positive feelings like, I am so excited about that idea. I feel excited when I think of a good, of, of good idea. That's amazing. My PhD student went to field work, read this empire, and felt that, oh, these women in the Bangladesh village are very, almost illiterate. They can't read, they can't write. But they get loans, they do businesses small way, yeah? And they have accounts, and they pay loans back. They know the, uh, they know the progress of their businesses. They, they analyze their business evolution, etc., etc. How? By talking to each other, without writing anything. Accounting historians argued accounting developed with the development of writing. If writing didn't happen, accounting would not develop. Because accounting began with bookkeeping, meaning keeping the things in books. But these women are keeping the things in conversations. Oh, yes. A new, new form of accounting. That is how new liberal ideas are now traveling into uncharted territories to set up markets in between the feelings and relationships of people, women, illiterate women. So he found a different practice of accounting. It's an exciting idea. That is amazing. Oral accounts, he called it. New term coined. That's, that's kind, that such kind of thing are very important. When you write, you can write. My colleagues, writing colleagues. My colleagues are writing colleagues. When I ask something, what do you think about this? All right, Dan, I will think about it? No, I will write about it. Meaning, I will think about it. Meaning, writing is thinking. Meaning, thinking is writing. Meaning, when you write, you write. Therefore, the first thing you must do is that you have to sit down and put your head down at the computer. You have to start writing. Then you start writing coherently, meaning, meaning, I have a point, and I write that point in the first sentence of the paragraph, and I elaborate that point in the second, third sentences of that paragraph, and I have references to my elaboration, and 
I have some definitions, numbers, analysis, etc., etc., to prove my point within the paragraph. Therefore, my center of expression of that point is that paragraph. I write coherently within the paragraph and I switch into the next paragraph by hinting that switch in the last sentence of my paragraph. Then I light your chain around your neck. I link my paragraph to the other paragraph and so on. What is this? What is this? An uninterrupted flow of an argument. It is just like a train. In the train, the first compartment tells you where the train goes. In the first compartment of the train, tells you what the train's engine and type is. Like in a paper what this paper is about and what this paper is going on. And all the other compartments are nicely and fitly connected to the train. That makes a train. That makes a train. Whatever, whatever the lines they are, the train goes uninterruptedly. Train is going. That's an argument an uninterrupted flow of an argument. That's a paper. The train is a paper. Nor any others, buses or cars or cycles or so in between in the train. No. They are all train compartments. My compartment is a paragraph. I have a point and I have elaborated that point in the paragraph. In the train, in the compartment, there are people in the compartment. All the people in the compartment are like my elaboration of the point I'm taking in the paragraph. The compartment is elaborated with colorful different men and women and children. They are the descriptions and the elaboration of the point I'm making within the paragraph, the compartment. So when I write coherently, I get a nice feeling. Then only you write. Therefore, qualitative researchers must be good writers, clever writers. If you can't, you, you cannot. If you cannot be a clever writer, don't take qualitative research. If you can't, you can you can talk cleverly. If you can write cleverly. If you can't write cleverly, you can't talk cleverly. Whatever you talk. The way you talk can be actually used in your writing as well. Therefore, qualitative research is about writing. Writing about writing. Writing about with a good feeling. So, you will be psychological term, your friend. You will be over enjoyed by writing. Why are you an academic? Because I like writing. Because I like research. Because I like presenting. Because I like publishing. Because I like creating new ideas. You, you will get over enjoyed then you have realized that you can go into a good conclusion. Whenever I finish a paper, I have a nice feeling of that day. When I get the email message from the journal publisher, your paper, I'm pleased to tell you that your paper has been accepted. That feeling, we are looking forward to that feeling all the time. So you are, you are releasing your things out of the pipeline on a, on, a, on, a, on a gradual basis. I like reading of my writing. Therefore, I like writing. I like reading of the other's writing for my writing. 
and as a result, I write. And later on, I read my writing. I like that, therefore I write on a daily basis. So when you write, you should write logically. When you can write logically, you can talk logically as well. Lecturing is a logical presentation rather than reproducing what you learn from your undergraduate nonsense. Therefore, you have to develop your positive experiences about writing. You have to be busy, you have to be busy writing. But if you are busy without doing writing, you can't write. Why? You are not too busy to write. You are busy because you do not write. You are busy doing some other things. Watching films, going here and there, and sleeping, and sleeping again, and so on. So you are busy. Therefore, you are not busy writing. Therefore, the first thing you have to do in the morning, or last thing you have to do in the night, is the first and foremost writing. That is what you need to do. But, you are adults. You are parts of families. You have children. Wives, husbands, parents to take care of. Therefore, you cannot find a big block for writing on a day. A three hour block, difficult to find. At least find 15 minutes a day. That's enough if you write daily. That's enough. <coughs> if you write daily and if you write seriously, and if you write lovely, and if you write coherently, you write dead. Rather than waiting for that three hour block. If you're waiting for your three hour block or two hour block, you will never write. If you will never write, you will never ever write. Like brushing your teeth, do you brush your teeth every day? Yes, you write every day. How long you take to get yourself ready for you to go to the university? Yeah, you make your hair, you make your face, yeah, you brush your teeth, you dress your dress. How, how many, how long you take? 30 minutes? Yes. Yeah, 30 minutes? Yeah, half of the time is enough for writing. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't actually make your hair. I don't spend time on making my hair. But you have to do it. So you have to do it on a daily basis all the time. Lifestyle. Yeah. I think it's a lifestyle should be. If you take too long to make your hair, follow my hairstyle. <laughs> the other thing is actually rejection. Yeah. A number of a number of papers were rejected, which I wrote. The rule applies to everybody, young to old lecturers to professors. Don't worry. Maybe that your paper doesn't fit in the theme of the paper. Don't. Maybe the theory is not right. Maybe the conclusion was not actually coming out from the analysis. Maybe the data is so synoptic, too narrow. 
Maybe you have not started the paper, but you have finished it. Because your introduction doesn't carry a research problem. A research problem derived from the literature review. Therefore, you have not started the paper, but you have finished and submitted. Like you have presented many papers at this conference. Lots of people actually get their papers rejected because there are no papers. Or if there are two, three papers together in one paper, there is no paper. Therefore, papers get rejected. Leave your rejection letter for a while. Kick your cat and lose your head. And find some time for you to think about it again you will come up with a better idea. Talk to your colleagues later. You will develop a better paper to be published in a better journal than what you have submitted to. Can I ask a question? How long it might take to get a good paper published in a top ranked journal? ISI journal. How long? One paper. More than four months. More than four months. Okay. How long? Six months. How long? Yeah, you have never done that. Yeah, because she has done a lot of other things. Yeah. One year. How long it might take? One year. One year. Three to four years. Sorry? Three to four years. Three to four years. One answer was correct in this class. Your answer. Three to four years. One time. That's the kind of paper I'm talking about. That's the kind of paper I'm talking about. Yeah, three, two to three to four years, maybe five years. For my first paper to be published, it took five years. Depends on the background of the writer. No, no. Whoever you are, whoever you are, it doesn't matter whether you are a professor or a lecturer, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Do you think that the professors can write papers in months? No. It takes such a long period of time. Mustafa can understand it. To collect data, to analyze data, to write the first, I'm talking about qualitative case studies, to write a paper in the first crude draft form, I might spend one year. Then only I present that draft paper at the conference. The conference we attend are not the publication destinations. Conferences are not meant to be publication avenues. If you are thinking of conferences in that way, what you are doing is that you are destroying the, you are destroying the good faith of academic knowledge production. We present the paper at a conference to get the feedback of my tribe, my colleagues, who I know, my tribe, my extended family members, who are coming from all around the world. Yeah? So we, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't have a chance to attend that conference. It was, um, there in Melbourne in July this year. That is called Asia Pacific Interdisciplinary Accounting Conference, APIRA. It was held in an Asia Pacific region in every three years. I, I couldn't attend there because normally I go there. Every year we have such a conference, same people go there. Next year we are going to Canada. 
same people, same bunch of people. How many people? About 150 to 200, 200 people. They are my tribes. They know my work. I know them. They know me. They know my papers. They know who I am. They know what the theoretical frameworks I am taking. They know what the kind of person I am in research. Everybody. We all go there every year. One year in Canada, one year in Europe, one year in Asia Pacific region. They are not publication destinations, these conferences. They don't promise that my paper is going to get accepted. They are the places of social networking. They are the places of feedback. They are the places of improvement. They are the places of conversation. They are the places of further development. They are the, they are the places of revamping of our work. That is what we have to do. Therefore, don't write papers for the sake of writing. You have to start with a question that fascinated, fascinated them, your colleagues, your tribes. An interesting question, an unasked question, an unexplored question that you have formulated, formulated based on the literature review, not review of 500 articles, but not review of three papers, but review of 10, 15 papers in that particular stream of research. All streams are flowing into the river and the sea of knowledge. But you are concentrating on one small stream that flowing is the river of knowledge. You find 10, 15 papers about that stream of knowledge. You must actually reread, finding your own reading. You reread differently, different to who what the others have read. Because same paper can be read by different people differently for different purposes. Because paper is not a statement of facts. A paper is not a statement of facts. A paper is a statement of an argument. Paper is a statement of an opinion. But when I read that paper, in conjunction with my opinion, in conjunction with my knowledge, in conjunction with my perspective, I would read that paper differently. And that reading is not somebody else's reading, and that is my reading. My reading must be written. My reading must be written. That is the literature review. Literature review is not saying that person said this, that person said this, and that person said this, and that person said this. That is not the literature review. When our, when our an inexperienced students actually come out with such a literature review, saying that person said that, that, I ask, what you think? Write that. What you read? Write that. Therefore, literature review is not a summary of others' work. Literature review is not a reproduction of others' work. Literature review is about your feeling, your reading of others' work. Your reading, which is different to what the others have read previously. Therefore, your literature review cannot be a replica of other literature reviews of the 70s, 
same materials. Your literature review is original, meaning this review had not been done by anyone else in the world previously. Because you are the authority of reading the papers in a different way. <coughs> that is the literature review I'm talking. Why are you doing a literature review? Why are you doing a literature review? identify gaps. <coughs> yes, good. Yeah. It's a good answer. Identify the gap. Yes. Why are you identifying a gap? To find out what was uh, in between. If I find out a gap in between, yeah, what I, I can do? Bridge, bridge, bridge the gap. Yeah, very good. I'm going to bridge the gap okay. by this marker. Mm -hmm. What is this marker? My, my you are my my paper. Yeah, what is this marker? My question. My question. I find a gap to locate my question. Therefore, I create this gap for me to locate my gap, my question. Is there is any right way of creating that gap? Is there is any right way of creating that gap? No. But some people say that your relief is not valid. Some people say that your relief is not legitimate. Or some people may say that your relief is not that good. Why? You have not actually shown the gap logically, systematically, convincingly, astonishingly for us to, for the readers to be surprised, to be astonished. Therefore, what is it? It's about writing. It's about logical writing. It's about logical reasoning. It's about logical observation. That is how you can create a gap. Therefore, gap creation is a construction. Like an architect draws a new design. Like an architect draws a new design. Your literature review is such a thing. Yeah? I've got a question. Yeah. Um, could a gap be Different people view things differently. Yeah, so yeah. A gap could be a per your perception and somebody else's perception. Yeah, 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 that's right. But and also, you may say that these people, uh, the, the, the the literature is concerned with these kind of things so far, but people have not considered this aspect, this perspective. Yeah, this analysis, this angle. That's a gap. Yeah, that's a gap. But to that, to be effective, you have to write properly. It's about writing. It's about logical writing. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to <coughs> try to wrap up. This is a, this is an abstract where you can find what the paper is all about. Yeah? Abstract of a research paper published in JMS. You are in management people must know JMS, Journal of Management Studies. It's a top ranked journal in the world. JMS, Journal of Management Studies. Jengren, the second person here, Jengren, is one of editors of Critical Perspectives on Accounting, CPA. Have you heard of CPA? Yeah? Critical Perspectives on Accounting. 
Gendron, second author here, is one of editors of CPA. Critical perspectives on accounting, they publish uh, research papers, qualitative research papers, carrying sociological, anthropological, political theories. Look at this. This is a management research paper. Research paper published in a management journal. I'm not going to, as, as I said at the beginning, I'm not going to finish all the slides, but I'm going to circulate the slides to you, yeah, for you to think about. My, 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 my purpose of this presentation is to make an impression about research, yeah? Yeah. Have you been in first? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Shall we read this together? Using change theory. Yeah. Read loudly. Yeah. Using change theory, integrated with both theory and sociology. Have you heard of Boju? Piero Boju? No. No. Very naughty. Very famous French philosopher. Piero Bojo. Yeah? Yeah? Have you, have you heard of practice theory? No? He's the father of practice theory. Yeah? I don't know who the mother was. He's the father of practice theory. Like Adam Smith is the father of economics. We theorize, ah, speak in qualitative research. Yeah? You write lively. Engaging the reader. The English saying is that put your reader, yeah, put yourself, yeah, put yourself in the shoes of the reader. That's the English saying. Put yourself, yeah, in the shoes of the reader. That means you have to beg and speak to the reader. Yeah, we read your eyes. Many previously people had theorized. Now we re-theorize. A major institutional shift in the field of public accounting. Yeah? That's the purpose of the paper. The case, it's a case study. The case we examine involves the consolidation of commercial values. Yeah, in the auditing profession, because auditing has, should not have commercial values. Yeah, auditing must have judgmental, yeah? yeah, judgmental values. Yeah, in reinterpreting this shift, you know what the shift is now. We highlight an institutional process. We highlight our story, yeah? An institutional process structured around a conflict between commercial innovators and guardians of the professional tradition. That's a contradiction. I talked about institutional logic contradiction the other day. Our analysis, yeah, speaking to the reader, our analysis indicates a peculiar, new, a thing that has never been told, a peculiar kind of institutional work. Institutional work is a theoretical phrase in institutional theory. Readers know about it. Why? You are writing to your research colleagues around the world. Institutional work, wherein economic capital, like money, is reinforced, reinforced, at the field level, profession level, while the logic of commercialism yeah, is 
strengthened in accounting firms, structures, and practitioners' mindset. See, they are saying something very philosophically, very theoretically, based on a case study. From our study of the field of accountancy, we develop We develop the concept of institutional and institutional experimentation in order to offer a view of theory. <coughs> Do you see any practical recommendation for policymakers, educators, politicians, governments? accounting professional bodies, accountants, auditors? No. The purpose is to re-theorize. <coughs> that is how top class ISI journals publish knowledge. That is how knowledge progresses. That is how People write every day. That is how top class academics publish papers. I'm going to stop there. Any questions? Thank you very much. My first question is how can accounting have uh, half theory? Because you will identify the gap of theory. Mm. In the uh, business uh, 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 researches. Yeah. So I uh, will it continue like that, or will somebody wake up and try to finish the job? Yeah. Oh? yeah. But I, I, I'm, I'm not uh, sure what your question is. You said I can't. I didn't say that. Yeah. Uh, uh, these people said that. Yes. I didn't say that. No, I, 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 I read the yeah. Overall in your presentation. Yeah. You can you can read this whole paper anyway. Yes. The whole bed is only the abstract. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, overall, in your presentation, my question centers around your presentation. Yeah, uh, okay. That there are no theories in social sciences that yeah. you borrow theories. Yeah, yeah. From sociology. Sociology, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Accounting or marketing or whatever. And I ask say this, this can be seen as a gap in our own uh, studies. That on on, on, on this day. Yes. No, yes. no. Without, without the theory, you can practice accounting. That is accounting practice. But for how long are we going to be borrowing theories? If to I explain think, the world. Yes. So if, if you need to borrow theories, we, why don't we No, no. no you you have a, that's called the problem of functionalism yes. in sociology. Yes. Yeah. Mural and Morgan's work. Yes. Yeah. You think that actually by doing this, you can improve accounting. Yes. The purpose of research is not to improve accounting. Accounting practice. That's left to accounting profession, accounting standard body, IFRs as people, big accounting firms in the world, left to them. Yeah, that is not our role. That is not policymakers' role. You are, you are, you are, that is, that is policymakers' role. You are an academic. You are explaining the world, how things are going on. What is going on in the name of accounting? In this paper, they are revealing the truth. They are revealing the truth about what is going on in the name of auditing. Sometimes they need to uh, to put them all. Yeah, the, by, yeah, the, the layer, at, at, at the policy level layer, the accountants and professional level layer. Yeah, they, yeah they, they, they could actually use the research. Yeah. They, in this paper, they are saying that actually auditing is a very noble profession they must actually carry judgmental value. Now we are living in a very commercial, very neoliberal, very globalized world. Therefore, even accounting profession is now contaminated. Contaminated by what? Commercializing, co commercialism, commercial values. So we are revealing the truth. That's the role of a theory. There are YouTube talks by Hart and Negri. 
they have written a book, Empire, they explain what is this world now, what is this world now, what is this globalized, neoliberalized world now, why microfinance is traveling to remote rural areas, finding rural poor women's bodies as marketplaces, how rural village women's relationships have been transformed into a marketplace, that kind of sociological analysis is very interesting, very exciting, very amazing. Otherwise, economists say that, or banking people say that, oh, we are giving loans to you know, rural women to get their poverty reduced, is it? We have another belief. We have a sociological analysis to what is going on. We read Empire, hard work, hard to read, very difficult to read. You can find this book, Google now, Empire, Heart and Angry, 2005, 2009. So I like, so we, we, we read this new, these new developments in social theories. Why? We need social theories to explain our stories. Because our disciplines have no theories. Business school disciplines have no theories. Business schools teach marketing, HRM, productions management, accounting, whatever, they are not theories. They are practices. The, thing, the, the, the way things should be done, they are not theories. Now, these young people think that balance scorecard is a theory. No. It's not a theory. What is a theory? Way of explaining the world. The way of knowing about the world. Why do we do research? To know why things happen in the world. Not to recommend how to do things better. That is not research. That is the role of the politician. That is the role of the policymaker. That is the role of the World Bank or Central Bank or whatever. They are not the role of research. Don't recommend anything. Instead, make a tiny incremental contribution to existing knowledge about the thing you are talking about, not everything. Make a contribution, incremental contribution. Why incremental? Research is a small thing. A specific thing. You can't do everything. An incremental contribution. Then what is going to be the rest? The other researchers will carry on. In the last paragraph of your research paper, you must write something about future research direction. Not the recommendation to Better practices. That is not your role. You're an academic. That is why you, in research intensive universities such as Glasgow, such as Oxford, such as Imperial College, such as LSC exist. Because we are making a contribution to knowledge. If you don't do that in your research paper, you are not writing a research paper. If you don't present about it at the conference, you're not presenting a research paper. Right, shall we move on? <coughs> people don't, if you, people, if you don't write, if you don't write, what will happen? You will not write. If you don't write, you will not write. 
Why? You have this thing. You have this thing. I can't really revise it. I can't get my first draft. My English is not good. Other people think that I am dumb. I have a good idea, but foggy is coming in front of me. Get the things blessed. If you don't write, you will not write because you are not writing, therefore you are having this. You don't have time to write, why? You don't have time to write, why? You are spending time on this. Therefore you don't have time to write. Why you are not writing? You are bothering about writing and you are spending time on bothering. Therefore you don't write. That's my experience with my students. Lots of, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm going to circulate this thing. Send it, yeah, sorry. Lots of feelings. All these are negative feelings, but at the same time, if you have some positive feelings, you may gradually start writing. Positive feelings like, I am so excited about that idea. I feel excited when I think of a good, of, of good idea. Oh, that's amazing. My PhD student went to field work, read this empire, and felt that, oh, these women in the Bangladesh village are very, almost illiterate. They can't read, they can't write. But they get loans, they do businesses small way, yeah? And they have accounts, and they pay loans back. They know the, uh, they know the progress of their businesses. They, they analyze their business evolution, etc., etc. How? By talking to each other, without writing anything. Accounting historians argued accounting developed with the development of writing. If writing didn't happen, accounting would not develop. Because accounting began with bookkeeping, meaning keeping the things in books. But these women are keeping the things in conversations. Oh, yes! a new, new form of accounting. That is how new liberal ideas are now traveling into uncharted territories to set up markets in between the feelings and relationships of people. Women. Illiterate women. So he found a different practice of accounting. It's an exciting idea. That is amazing. Oral accounts, he called it. New term coined. That's, that's kind, that such kind of things are very important. When you write, you can write. My colleagues, writing colleagues. My colleagues are writing colleagues. When I ask something, what do you think about this? All right, Dan, I will think about it? No, I will write about it. Meaning, I will think about it. Meaning, writing is thinking. Meaning, thinking is writing. Meaning, when you write, you write. Therefore, the first thing you must do is that you have to sit down and put your head down at the computer. 
you have to start writing. Then you start writing coherently, meaning, meaning I have a point and I write that point in the first sentence of the paragraph and I elaborate that point in the second, third sentences of that paragraph and I have references to my elaboration and I have some definitions, numbers, analysis, etc., etc., to prove my point within the paragraph. Therefore, my center of expression of that point is that paragraph. I write coherently within the paragraph and I switch into the next paragraph by hinting that switch in the last sentence of my paragraph. Then I light your chain around your neck. I link my paragraph to the other paragraph and so on. What is this? What is this? An uninterrupted flow of an argument. It is just like a train. In the train, the first compartment tells you where the train goes. In the first compartment of the train tells you what the train's engine and type is. Like in a paper, what this paper is about and what this paper is going on. And all the other compartments are nicely and swiftly connected to the train. That makes a train. That makes a train. Whatever, whatever the lines they are, the train goes uninterruptedly. Train is going. That's an argument. An uninterrupted flow of an argument. That's a paper. The train is a paper. No any others, buses or cars or cycles or so in between in the train. No. They are all train compartments. My compartment is a paragraph. I have a point and I have elaborated that point in the paragraph. In the train, in the compartment, there are people in the compartment. All the people in the compartment are like my elaboration of the point I'm taking in the paragraph. The compartment is elaborated with colorful different men and women and children. They are the descriptions and the elaboration of the point I am making within the paragraph, the compartment. So when I write coherently, I get a nice feeling. Then only you write. Therefore, qualitative researchers must be good writers, clever writers. If you can't, you, you cannot, if you cannot be a clever writer, don't take qualitative research. If you can't, you can, you can talk cleverly if you can write cleverly. If you can't write cleverly, you can't talk, talk cleverly. Whatever you talk, the way you talk can be actually used in your writing as well. Therefore, qualitative research is about writing. Writing about writing, writing about with a good feeling. So you will be psychological term euphoric. You will be over enjoyed by writing. Why are you an academic? Because I like writing. Because I like research. Because I like presenting, because I like publishing, because I like creating new ideas, you, you will get over enjoyed when you have realized that you can go into a good conclusion. Whenever I finish a paper, I have a nice feeling of that day. When I get the email message from the journal publisher, your paper, I am pleased to tell you that your paper has been accepted. That feeling. 
we are looking forward to that feeling all the time. So you are, you are releasing your things out of the pipeline on a, on a, on a, on a gradual basis. I like freely of my writing. Therefore, I like writing. I like reading of the other's writing for my writing. And as a result, I write. And later on, I read my writing. I like that. Therefore, I write on a daily basis. So when you write, you should write logically. When you can write logically, you can talk logically as well. Lecturing is a logical presentation rather than reproducing what you learn from your undergraduate nonsense. Therefore, you have to develop your positive experiences about writing. You have to be busy, you have to be busy writing. But if you are busy without doing writing, you can't write. Why? You are not too busy to write. You are busy because you do not write. You are busy doing some other things. Watching films, going here and there, and sleeping, and sleeping again, and so on. So you are busy. Therefore, you are not busy writing. Therefore, the first thing you have to do in the morning, or last thing you have to do in the night, is the first and foremost writing. That is what you need to do. But, you are adults. You are part of families. You have children. Wives, husbands, parents to take care of. Therefore, you cannot find a big block for writing on a day. A three hour block, difficult to find. At least find 15 minutes a day. That's enough if you write daily. That's enough. <coughs> if you write daily and if you write seriously, and if you write lovely, and if you write coherently, you write dead. Rather than waiting for that three hour block. If you are waiting for your three hour block or two hour block, you will never write. If you will never write, you will never ever write. Like brushing your teeth, do you brush your teeth every day? Yes, you write every day. How long you take to get yourself ready for you to go to the university? Yeah, you make your hair, you make your face, yeah, you brush your teeth, you dress your dress. How how many? How long you take? Thirty minutes. Yeah. Yeah, thirty minutes. Yeah, half of the time is enough for writing. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't actually make your hair. I don't spend time on making my hair. But you have to do it. So you have to do it on a daily basis all the time. Lifestyle. Yeah. I think it's a lifestyle should be. If you take too long to make your hair, follow my hairstyle. <laughs> the other thing is actually rejection. Yeah. A number of a number of papers were rejected, which I wrote. The rule applies to everybody, young to old. 
lecturers to professors. Don't worry. Maybe that your paper doesn't fit in the theme of the paper, journal. Maybe the theory is not right. Maybe the conclusion was not actually coming out from the analysis. Maybe the data is so synoptic, too narrow. Maybe you have not started the paper, but you have finished it because your introduction doesn't carry a research problem. A research problem derived from the literature review. Therefore, you have not started the paper, but you have finished and submitted, like you have presented many papers at this conference. Lots of people actually get their papers rejected because there are no papers. Or if there are two, three papers together in one paper, there is no paper. Therefore, papers get rejected. Leave your rejection letter for a while. Kick your cat and lose your head. And find some time for you to think about it again. You will come up with a better idea. Talk to your colleagues later. You will develop a better paper to be published in a better journal than what you have submitted to. Can I ask a question? How long it might take to get a good paper published in a top ranked journal, ISI journal? How long? One paper. More than four months. More than four months. Okay. How long? Six months. How long? You have, you have never done that, yeah. Because she has done a lot of other things. Yeah. <laughs> One year. How long it might take? One year. Three to four years. Sorry? Three to four years. Three to four years. One answer was correct in this class your answer. Three to four years. One thing. That's the kind of paper I'm talking about. That's the kind of paper I'm talking about. Yeah, three, two to three to four years, maybe five years. For my first paper to be published, it took five years. No, no. Whoever you are, whoever you are, it doesn't matter whether you are a professor or a lecturer, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Do you think that the professors can write papers in months? No. It takes such a long period of time. Mustafa can understand. collect data, to analyze data, to write the first, I'm talking about qualitative case studies, to write a paper in the first crude draft form, I might spend one year. Then only I present that draft paper at the conference. The conference we attend are not the publication destinations. Conferences are not meant to be publication avenues. If you are thinking of conferences in that way, what you are doing is that you are destroying the, you are destroying the good faith of academic knowledge production. We present the paper at a conference to get the feedback of my tribe, my colleagues, who I know, my tribe, my extended family members, who are coming from all around the world. Yeah? So we, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't have a chance to attend that conference. It was um, 
that in Melbourne in July this year, that is called Asia Pacific Interdisciplinary Accounting Conference, APIRA. It was held in an Asia Pacific region in every three years. I, I couldn't attend there because but normally I go there. Every year we have such a conference, same people go there. Next year we are going to Canada, same people, same bunch of people. How many people? About 150 to 200 people. They are my tribes. They know my work. I know them. They know me. They know my papers. They know who I am. They know what the theoretical frameworks I am taking. They know what the kind of person I am in research. Everybody. We all go there every year. One year in Canada, one year in Europe, one year in Asia Pacific region. They are not publication destinations, these conferences. They don't promise that my paper is going to get accepted. They are the places of social networking. They are the places of feedback. They are the places of improvement. They are the places of conversation. They are the places of further development. They are the, they are the places of revamping of our work. That is what we have to do. Therefore, don't write papers for the sake of writing. You have to start with a question that fascinates fascinate them, your colleagues, your tribes. An interesting question, an unasked question, an unexplored question that you have formulated, formulated based on the literature review, not review of 500 articles, but not review of three papers, but review of 10, 15 papers in that particular stream of research. All streams are flowing into the river and the sea of knowledge. But you are concentrating on one small stream that flowing in the river of knowledge. You find 10, 15 papers about that stream of knowledge. You must actually reread, finding your own reading. You reread differently, different to who, what the others have read. Because same paper can be read by different people differently for different purposes. Because paper is not a statement of facts. A paper is not a statement of facts. A paper is a statement of an argument. Paper is a statement of an opinion. But when I read that paper in conjunction with my opinion, in conjunction with my knowledge, in conjunction with my perspective, I would read that paper differently. And that reading is not somebody else's reading, and that is my reading. My reading must be written. My reading must be written. That is the literature reading. Literature review is not saying that person said this, that person said this, and that person said this, and that person said this. That is not the literature review. When our, when our un inexperienced students actually come out with such a literature review, saying that person said that, that I ask, what you think? Write that. What you read? Write that. Therefore, literature review is 
not a summary of others' work. Literature review is not a reproduction of others' work. Literature review is about your feeling, your reading of others' work. Your reading, which is different to what the others have read previously. Therefore, your literature review cannot be a replica of other literature reviews of the same materials. Your literature review is original, meaning this review had not being done by anyone else in the world previously. Because you are the authority of reading the papers in a different way. <coughs> that is the literature review I am talking. Why are you doing a literature review? Why are you doing a literature review? Identify gaps. <coughs> yes, good. Yeah. It's a good answer. Identify the gap. Yes. Why are you identifying a gap? To find out what most are uh, the same in between. If I find out a gap in between, yeah, what I, I can do? Bridge, bridge, bridge the gap. Bridge the gap. Yeah, very good. I'm going to bridge the gap by this marker. What is this marker? New one. My paper. Yeah, what is this marker? My question. My question. I find a gap to locate my question. Therefore, I create this gap for me to locate my gap, my question. Is there is any right way of creating that gap? Is there is any right way of creating that gap? No. But some people say that your relief is not valid. Some people say that your relief is not legitimate. Or some people may say that your relief is not that good. Why? You have not actually shown the gap logically, systematically, convincingly, astonishingly for us to, for the readers to be surprised, to be astonished. Therefore, what is it? It's about writing. It's about logical writing. It's about logical reasoning. It's about logical observation. That is how you can create a gap. Therefore, gap creation is a construction. Like an architect draws a new design. Like an architect draws a new design. Your literature review is such a thing. Yeah? That's a question. Yeah. Um, could a gap be Different people view things differently. So yeah, yeah. A gap could be a per your perception and somebody else's perception. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But and also, you may say that these people, uh, the, the, the the literature is concerned with these kind of things so far, but people have not considered this aspect, this perspective. Yeah, this analysis, this angle. That's a gap. Yeah, that's a gap. But to that, to be effective, you have to write properly. It's about writing. It's about logical writing. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to <coughs> try to wrap up. This is a, this is an abstract where you can find what the paper is all about. Yeah? Abstract of a research paper published in JMS. You are in management people must know JMS, Journal of Management Studies. 
is a top ranked journal in the world. JMS, Journal of Management Studies. Jengren, the second person here, Jengren, is one of editors of Critical Perspectives on Accounting, CPA. Have you heard of CPA? Yeah? Critical Perspectives on Accounting. Jengren, second author here, is one of editors of CPA. Critical Perspectives on Accounting, they publish uh, research papers, qualitative research papers, carrying sociological, anthropological, political theories. Look at this. This is a management research paper. Research paper published in a management journal. I'm not going to, as, as I said at the beginning, I'm not going to finish all the slides, but I'm going to circulate the slides to you, yeah, for you to think about. My, 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 my purpose of this presentation is to make an impression about research. Yeah? Yeah. Have you been impressed? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Shall we read this together? Using change theory. Yeah? Read loudly. Yeah. Using, Using change theory. We integrate it with both theory and sociology. Have you heard of Boju? Piero Boju? No? No? Very naughty. Very famous French philosopher. Piero Boju. Yeah? Yeah? Have you? Have you heard of practice theory? No. He's the father of practice theory. Yeah? I don't know who the mother was. He's the father of practice theory. Like Adam Smith is the father of economics. We theorize, ah, speak in qualitative research. Yeah? You write li lively. Engage in the reader. The English saying is that put your reader, yeah, put yourself, yeah, put yourself in the shoes of the reader. Yeah. That's the English saying. Yeah. Put yourself, yeah, in the shoes of the reader. That means you have to beg and speak to the reader. Yeah? We re theorize, meaning previously people had theorized. Now we re-theorize a major institutional shift in the field of public accounting. Yeah? That's the purpose of the paper. The case, it's a case study. The case we examine involves the consolidation of commercial values. Yeah? In the auditing profession, because auditing has should not have commercial values. Yeah, auditing must have judgmental, yeah, yeah. judgmental values. Yeah, in reinterpreting this shift, you know what the shift is now. Yeah. We highlight an institutional process, we highlight our story, yeah, an institutional process structured around a conflict between commercial innovators and guardians of the professional tradition. That's a contradiction. I talked about institutional logic contradiction the other day. Our analysis, yeah, speaking to the reader, our analysis indicates a peculiar, new, a thing that has never been told, <laughs> a peculiar kind of institutional work. Institutional work is a theoretical phrase in institutional theory. Readers know about it. Why? 
you are writing to your research colleagues around the world. Institutional work, wherein economic capital, like money, is reinforced, reinforced at the field level, profession level, while the logic of commercialism yeah, is strengthened in accounting firms, structures, and practitioners' mindset. See, they are saying something very philosophically, very theoretically, based on a case study. From our study of the field of accountancy, we develop I don't know why it's not showing here on this. We develop the concept of institutional institutional experimentation in order to offer a view of theory. <coughs> Do you see any practical recommendation for policymakers, educators, politicians? Governments, accounting professional bodies, accountants, auditors? No. The purpose is to re theorize. <coughs> that is how top class ISI journals publish knowledge. That is how knowledge progresses. That is how people write every day. That is how top class academics publish papers. I'm going to stop there. Any questions? Thank you very much. My first question is how can accounting have uh, half theory? Because you identify that it's gap of Theory. Mm -hmm. in this uh, business uh, 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 researches. Yeah. So uh, will it continue like that, or will somebody wake up and try to do this? Yeah. Oh? yeah. But I, I, I'm, I'm not uh, sure what your question is. You said I can't. No, I didn't say. That. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> these people said that. Yeah. I didn't say. That. No, I, 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 I read overall, the yeah. Mm -hmm. in your presentation. Yeah. You can you can read this whole paper anyway. Yes. The whole bed is only the abstract. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, overall in your presentation, my question centers around your presentation. Yeah. Uh, okay. That there are no theories in social sciences. That yeah. Uh, borrow theories. Yeah. Yeah. From, from sociology. Sociology, I whatever. Know, yeah. yeah. Accounting or marketing or whatever. And I say no. this, this can be seen as a gap in our own uh, studies. That on on, on, on discipline. Yes. No, yes. no. Without, without the theory, you can practice accounting. That is accounting practice. But for how long are we going to be borrowing theories? If to I explain the world. Yes. So if, if you need to borrow theories, we, why don't we No, no. The, you have a, that's called the problem of functionalism yes. in sociology. Yes. Yeah. Weber and Morgan's work. Yes. Yeah. You think that actually by doing this, you can improve accounting. Yes. The purpose of research is not to improve accounting. Accounting practice. That's left to accounting profession, accounting standard body, IFRs as people, big accounting firms in the world, left to them. Yeah, that is not our role. That is not policymakers' role. You are, you are, you are, that is, that is policymakers' role. You are an academic. You are explaining the world, how things are going on. What is going on in the name of accounting? In this paper, they are revealing the truth. They are revealing the truth about what is going on in the name of auditing. Sometimes they need to uh, to put them all. Yeah, the, by, yeah, the, the layer, at, at, at the policy level layer, the accountants professional level layer. Oh, they use yeah, yeah they, they they could actually use the research. Yeah. 
they, in this paper they are saying that actually auditing is a very noble profession. They must actually carry judgmental value. Now we are living in a very commercial, very neoliberal, very globalized world. Therefore, even accounting profession is now contaminated. Contaminated by what? Commercializing, co commercialism, commercial values. So we are revealing the truth. That's the role of a theory. We are revealing the truth. What is going on in the name of accounting, auditing profession? What is the nature of auditing profession now? Because auditing has to be practiced in this real world. And China became open, etc., etc. <coughs> new public management, uh, uh, privatization, economic liberalization, that is neoliberalism. It's happening to auditing as well. Revealing the truth. Most research papers. Yeah? So, an inception of the nature of aim of the research. 95 or 99 people in this conference told that research is to fix the practical problem. That is not. Okay, the whole paper. And then who is going to fix the problem? Sorry? Yeah, you are, you, are teaching, you are teaching the students about what is going on in the world. Excuse me, some... Uh, uh, what, uh, what can you say? I need to... Yeah. They are evading the problems. They are not solving the problems. So I don't have researchers. to play. Research. Use your paper. I found the truth. I published it. Sometimes I read. Your 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 way is not correct. But that thing is not research. But that is not the role of a university lecture. You can do it part time. You may get paid. But it is not part of my research. <coughs> When I do that, actually, I have. <laughs> yeah? I read an article from a few years ago. There are and the the one who takes the decision in yeah. our country. Yeah. This is that's not a problem. That's not an academic problem. Always, Sometimes always there's a gap. Yeah. It is not a new finding. Always there's a gap. Because we we write in in society, if you don't know the truth. You can be a forerunner in society if you know what is going on. That is the role of a researcher. But at the beginning of your research paper, you said that my concept. That is not research. If you want to publish in top rank journals. But there are rubbish. Oh, yes, okay. why not? Okay. I don't know. Because people say, they said, I can't. Uh, from my heart, I can't do positivistic research. Therefore, I don't publish. My understanding, there is a, a conflict between the world. Yes, everything is political, yes. including your family, between you and your husband and his ex and vice versa. It is political. Always it is political. You are.